Today, we will be talking about the University of South Carolina Lady Gamecocks. As we gear up for the 2024-25 women's basketball season, let's take a closer look at the exciting schedule that awaits the Lady Gamecocks that will include 11 of the AP Top 25 teams this season. Welcome to Davis Sports Report. Please hit the like button on your way in and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Big part of the team. Everybody was satisfied with the minutes. Is that easy to carry over now that you know, maybe some freshmen or sophomores are like, well, maybe I need more? Have you seen any of that so far? No, haven't. I mean, this team is pretty tight. They, they really, really, really want the best for each other. Super unselfish, almost to a fault. Um, just really picked up where they left off, and hopefully that magic carries us through all the other prep for a game is you don't get that you don't get do-overs and we certainly don't get do-overs when you're when you're open the season um, with Michigan and NC State so we want to be locked into how we how especially our freshmen are able to just understand what we want what we're looking for in scouting reports and, and how we prepare for games. Well, you heard the coach. The regular season officially begins on November 4th with the Hall of Fame series against Michigan in Las Vegas, Nevada. The Wolverines have Jordan Hobbs returning, and they picked up Brooke Daniels from the transfer portal, as well as Canadian shooting guard Silo Ward from the recruiting class. November 10th will be the first matchup with a top 25 team, and this will be number nine North Carolina State at the Ally tip-off game that will be played in Charlotte, North Carolina. The Wolfpack went deep into the postseason in 2024, ultimately losing to the Gamecocks in the Final Four. They have several returning players, including Isaiah James, Madison Hayes, former Gamecock Sanaya Rivers, and they've added Caitlin Weimer from Boston University, as well as highly ranked freshman recruit Tilda Trigger, Zamaria Jones, and Devin Quigley. This will be an interesting matchup. November 24th, the Gamecocks will have an away game against number four ranked UCLA Bruins, who's returning their last year's top scorer and top rebounder, Lauren Betts, as well as Kiki Rice and Gabriela Jaquez. And from the transfer portal, they're bringing in Tamia Gardner from Oregon State and Janaya Barker from Texas A&M, along with highly ranked freshmen, Kendall Dudley, Zaniah Sakaguman, and Avery Kane. This will be a tough road game for the Lady Gamecocks. On November 28th, the Gamecocks will participate in the Fort Myers tip-off against number eight ranked Iowa State Cyclones, who have major pieces returning, including top scorer Audie Crooks, top rebounder Addie Brown, and playmaker Emily Ryan. Iowa State is another team that made it well into the postseason, barely losing to Cam Brink and the Stanford Cardinals. This will be another tough game for the Gamecocks, and the second game at the Fort Myers tip-off for the Gamecocks will be against Purdue. December 5th, the Gamecocks will host number 10th ranked Duke Blue Devils at home. The Blue Devils have top scorer Regan Richardson, top assist Tana Mayer, and top rebounder Aluche Okananwa returning, and they also picked up Canadian superstar Toby Fournier from the recruiting class. December 8th, the Gamecocks will participate in the Hoop Fest Coast to Coast Challenge hosted in Fort Worth, Texas. And while TCU is not ranked, they are worth mentioning. They will have Sedona Prince and Madison Connor returning, and they are adding Haley Van Lith and Maddie Shear from the transfer portal. I feel like this team should be taken seriously despite them not being ranked. January 12th, the Gamecocks will host number five ranked Texas Longhorns at home. And this is the team that I call the land of the bigs. You should check out our videos on the ESPN way too early top tens. But in a nutshell, this team has the height and the talent with Madison Booker, Rory Hammond, Aaliyah Moore, and Taylor Jones returning along with other very talented players. January 16th, the Gamecocks will have an away game to battle with number 24 ranked Alabama Crimson Tide in Tuscaloosa, who's returning top scorer Sarah Ashley Barker, top rebounder Essence Cody, also Jessica Timmons and Aaliyah Nye. Joining from the transfer portal are Christabel Azuma and Zaya Green, making this a solid team. January 19th, the Gamecocks will host the Oklahoma Sooners at home. Returning to the Sooners is a top scorer and rebounder, Skylar Van, as well as Peyton Van Holst and playmaker Nivia Tott. 
Coming in from the recruiting class is the younger sister of Skylar Van, and that is Zaya Van. January 23rd, the Gamecocks will host the LSU Tigers at home. The Tigers didn't lose much last year, and they have pivotal pieces coming back, such as Flage Johnson, Anissa Morrow, Michaela Williams, and Samaya Smith. They also added Jersey Wolfenberger and Cheyenne Day Wilson from the transfer portal, and January is going to be packed full of tough games for the Gamecocks. Moving on to February. On February 9th, the Gamecocks will have its second meetup with Madison Booker and the number five ranked Texas Longhorns, but this time it will be an away game. On February 13th, the Gamecocks will host the unranked Florida Gators at home. The Gators had a rough go of it last year, but they shouldn't be written out this year as they have top scorer Aliyah Matharu returning and top rebounder Jariah Warren, as well as Rashea Kyle. Florida got some impressive recruits, including two All-Americans that are Liv McGill and the daughter of Shaquille O'Neal, Miari O'Neal. They also recruited Kylie Kitts, who is the younger sister of South Carolina's Chloe Kitts, and the two sisters will be able to face off for their very first collegiate game. February 16th might be the hardest game of the season, where the Gamecocks will host number two ranked UConn at home. UConn has their top scorer Paige Beckers returning, as well as key players K.K. Arnold, Ozzy Fudd, and Ashlyn Shade returning, and they will only be made better this year with the addition of Caitlin Chen from the transfer portal. They also got number-ranked Sarah Strong, along with other highly-ranked freshmen, Ali Zebel, Morgan Chele, and Jaina El Alfi. On February 27th, the Gamecocks will be away to face number 20th ranked Ole Miss Rebels, who has top rebounder and assist Madison Scott returning, along with Kennedy Todd Williams and KK Deans. Coming from the transfertile is Star Jacobs, and that will make this team a contender. And lastly, on March 2nd, the Gamecocks will host University of Kentucky Wildcats at home who are now led by new coach Kenny Brooks, who brought with him Georgia Amore from Virginia Tech. Also coming from the transfer portal are Daisia Lawrence and the daughter of Kenny Brooks, Gabby Brooks. Returning for the Wildcats is Sanaya Tyler. The Gamecocks lost a huge piece of their roster, and that is going to be center Camilla Cardoza that recently completed her rookie year in the WNBA with Chicago Sky. Let's hear what Coach Staley has to say about losing such a crucial player. How big of a change is it with the defensive identity without someone like Camilla in the middle? Tough, tough, tough. I mean, you do 6'7", you know, national defensive player of the year, shot blocker, rebounder, unselfish, and somebody that you have to pretty much double team. I mean, all of our, all of our bigs will be single covered, you know, so big. Big loss, but we got we got several. I mean, we're gonna have to. Our, our post uh, group of players are pretty tight, and they they improved over the last three, four weeks, just off the charts. Um, but I mean, there there's some that um, Sakima looks much better. Uh, Fagan is much better. I mean, everybody has really improved. Miriam brings a different dimension to our our team. Um, Chloe, I mean, Chloe looks like a, she, she, she looks like she's in mid-season form. Um, and Adele is, is, is full go. Don't know how many minutes she'll play in Memphis if she even will play, but she's been full go here. And she's, she's got the starter kit of, of, you know, a dominant post, which we're usually, we, we, we've had over the past 10 years that we don't, we don't have as far as, uh, just, People that have been in that position. They're working towards it, but until we get somebody that's going to come out and be that that focal point, we're going to have to do it as a as a unit, and our, and our bigs are really like, leaning on each other to do it. You all got a starting lineup in mind? Maybe you can tell us or wait till the Lord knows. <laughs> mm, don't you, who do you think it is? Uh, Raven, Breezy, Kyle, Chloe, Sanaya. Boom. <laughs> Boom. You gonna start that because I said there was uh, ours. Boom. <laughs> Boom. That's it. Right. That's it. That's, that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Last one. 
Last season, the Gamecocks finished undefeated and won the national championship. This year, they're aiming to defend their title and continue their dominance in women's college basketball. Let us know if you think South Carolina can repeat and get a back-to-back -back undefeated season or if you think one of the teams will derail their journey to make history by joining only UConn, who has had two undefeated back-to-back -back seasons. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for more updates as we continue our coverage on the exciting upcoming season. And remember to like, comment, and subscribe.